going on guys so I want to give you an update on that uh, 100 ounce silver bullion bar uh, from Matt Max I did a video on a few days back uh, in that video I happen to mention that I wanted to uh, you know investigate going the route of selling it back to silver dealers all right contacted JM bullion as well as at Max and they both have features of uh, you know selling precious metals to them and uh, I want to just uh, see what kind of offers they were gonna give all right, I was very curious about it so I contacted both Atmax as well as JM Bullion through their website, through their you know sell to them feature, and uh, Atmax uh, had contacted me right away. I got an email with an offer within an hour, and uh, I printed that. This is the first email. The second one I'll explain in a second, um, as well as a phone call. I got a phone call the same day, a couple hours later, from uh, one of the representatives. He left a voicemail. Uh, you know, want to talk about um, you know the offer and all that kind of stuff. So it was really an immediate response. A very thorough response as well. All right, they gave me an official offer here, and uh, when I made this first uh, request, uh, again I was trying to uh, offer them a hundred ounce bar. All right, their own bar that they had produced in the past, and at the time it was exactly twenty four dollars and two cents uh, an ounce for silver spot price. All right, if you don't know, spot price is what uh, that you know precious metal is worth at that very second. All right. Now, generally speaking, when you're buying silver, you're trying to get it for less than its value. And when you're selling silver, you try to sell it for more than its value. That's the whole point, right? But spot price is the exact to the penny value of that precious metal at that given time. And it's always changing. So uh, their offer to me was $2,202, all right? So essentially, the bar at 2402 spot was worth $2,402, okay? And they were offering me $2,202. So... They were saying that they were going to give me $200 less than the actual value of the silver at that time, which is somewhat normal. Obviously, they want to buy it as cheap as possible. They want to get it for less than spot price. And uh, doing a quick calculation, if my math is right, they offered me 91.67% of the value of that bar. Now, it's not a horrible offer at all. Um, however, I would say that most places outside of maybe the pawn shop where they you know, obviously feed on people's desperation, and maybe some coin shops, just depends. But more times than not, you can easily sell your silver and gold and platinum and palladium for at least spot, all right? Spot price is its actual value and more than plenty of people are willing to purchase it at spot price at any given time because that's a good deal. Usually people are buying it for a little bit more than spot because of either premiums on it or the person selling it obviously wants to make money, right? So what was interesting is I contacted them, I emailed back and I also called. I called to talk to the representative, the exact guy who called me was busy. I talked to one of his uh, other associates there. The other associate was like, I, I, I mean, I guess the best, the best word for it was snarky. Uh, he was professional in a way, but like I said, it was, it was a little, I don't know, like condescending the way he was talking to me because I was basically calling back and saying, you know, thank you. I was very polite. I said, thank you so much for the offer and everything. I want to talk to so-and-so just to let him know, you know, that I appreciate the offer, but I'm going to pass on it. And he was kind of like, I don't know, I guess maybe a little surprised that I was passing on the offer, you know, and I told him that I was looking to get a little bit more, you know, closer to spot price for the, for the silver. And he was just like, kind of like, whatever, you know, whatever, man, you know, we could have gave you money. That's the attitude I got. I mean, who knows? Maybe I was reading it wrong, but that's kind of the impression I got. So, um, even though I called and, and the guy said he was going to leave a message for the other guy so he wouldn't have to bother calling me back, and he said he did, and uh, like a couple hours later, I got another call from the other guy. I missed the call again. He left another voicemail. Oh, I'm so sorry. I missed you. So, I don't even think he got the message. Anyway, they're, they're trying real hard to uh, get in touch with me to sell me, uh, or excuse me, to buy this silver that I'm offering to sell them. So uh, I ended up calling back and, and talking to him and, and explaining. And, and the, the guy, the original representative, was nice. And he's like, okay, totally understand. You know, hope you have a great day. And uh, <laughs> then I got another email from Matt Max the very next day with another offer because obviously spot price is always changing. So the next day, uh, or I'm sorry, this might have been two days later. But anyway, they sent me another official offer. It's like a long email. And uh, this was when spot price was $25.87. Okay, so this was after I actually sold the silver, which we'll talk about in a second because I did sell it. Um, and their offer was $2,387, uh, which turned out to be a little bit more than the previous offer. It was 92.26% of its actual value at the time. 
So my assumption is the higher the price of the metal, the closer they're going to get to the uh, actual value of that piece. Now, that's just my assumption. I don't really know, you know what their system is as far as giving offers. I couldn't tell you. But what I will tell you is that even though they're very professional, um, they do come in low as far as offers go, okay? I know for a fact if you put any silver, any gold on eBay, you're going to get very close to spot price, if not over spot price from people bidding and having little bidding wars, all right? So I appreciate it, but obviously I was not interested, okay? But they are persistent. We'll see if they <laughs> send me another offer. I, I doubt it at this point since I talked to the person, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was a very kind of you know straightforward thing they just came in a little bit low but i do appreciate their professionalism and their quick response now jm bullion i had contacted the same day and i requested to um you know get a uh, an email that's what i preferred as opposed to a phone call and um they uh did not get back to me to date i have not gotten a response i emailed them twice however they have another uh way to to sell them uh silver and gold and stuff and that is uh, automatically through the website. So when you go to the website, they have a sell to us tab. You click on that, you find, uh, you know, what, whatever product you're trying to sell to them. They have a long list. You could search for things. And I pick the 100 ounce random bar. They don't care, you know, the condition of the silver, whether, you know, it's tarnished, colored, brand new, shiny. They don't really care. Um, as well as they don't care what the mintage is. They don't care where it came from. As long as it's exactly 100 ounces and it's pure silver and it's real. Um, they have their their offer automatically in their system and their offer was four dollars more than than spot price So right off the bat now I didn't go through this entire process obviously because number one by the time I realized this I don't even have the silver to sell um, and number two um, You know their system they require a credit card and everything so I couldn't just kind of see what would happen without putting in personal information all that stuff so I decided not to but how it looks to me and I tried a couple different other random pieces it looks like they're going to give you a much better price than Atmex as far as selling it to them. Now, again, it is automated, and they give you, like, once you, you select what you want, they give you, like, a timer. Okay, you have 10 minutes to accept this offer, because obviously, you know, the price of, of metals are constantly changing, so you can't sit on that offer, and then as, you know, silver drops, still sell to them for that, you know, extra bit of money. So, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't follow through with that process, but I'd have to say if I was looking to sell again, uh, particularly in a larger amount, I would definitely go back to JM Bullion and go through that process because they will give you a much better uh, price. Now, here's what actually happened because I was curious to see what they were going to sell to me for, but I wasn't really looking to sell it to them. Um, what I really uh, wanted to do was sell it to just an individual, all right? And I wanted to meet them and it happened to work out. I was able to do that. So here's what happened. I listed it on um, Instagram, just kind of, you know, getting some ideas of what people might offer. And I actually had a bunch of people interested. <clears throat> but the problem was that uh, some of these people were in different countries. I definitely did not want to ship this out of the U.S. It just makes it very complicated, uh, mostly because uh, you can't insure precious metals very easily. All right. Regular postal service uh, does not insure you know, priority mail, all their, their different things, except for registered mail, they, they will not cover precious metals and I believe cash, um, you know, in any kind of insurance policy. So if I tried to insure it and it got lost, I would not be able to claim. I believe, and I'm not 100% on this, because it's been quite some time since I've, I've done any postal stuff, but I'm pretty sure you can um, insure it if you send it registered mail. Now, registered mail is the highest priority the day it goes out, if it's not delivered, it goes back into a safe. I mean, it is signed for. It, it is like you'll if you're a postal worker and you lose like a registered package, you're fired. Like there's no there's no way around that. It is the highest priority. Period. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure they do actually register through, or excuse me, um, insure precious metals through registered mail USPS. Now again, not 100 percent on it, but I'm, I, I've heard multiple times that both UPS and FedEx do not insure precious metals at all. So you're really taking a chance, you know? And to send something registered, insure it, you know, in this particular case, it was worth $2,500. Uh, and I didn't want to spend the money. I don't know what it would have cost. Who knows what it cost me? 50 bucks, 100 bucks, $150. I really don't know. I didn't want to spend the money, but I would have. I would have spent that money to ship it to someone. But uh, eventually I got a message from um, a viewer who's been watching the videos for a long time. Really, really nice guy. He was interested, he wanted to buy it, he was at work, he said I could pay you as soon as I get out of work, and he did, he sent me over payment, 
And then, uh, you know, at this point, the storm was coming. You know, this last storm we got where everyone just got dumped on with snow. I knew it was coming. And it's funny because he sent he sent the message like pretty early in the day. And uh, it was supposed to start uh, snowing here around 4 o'clock. And I want to say that we talked and he got out of work and he paid me around like 2, maybe 2.30. Um, so uh, he said hey, can you meet me today? Because we were talking about it a little bit and I asked him where he lived. I'm like, you don't have to happen to live in Pennsylvania, do it? He's like, oh no, I'm in Jersey. But he told me what, where he was in Jersey. I'm like, oh man, that's not that far. That's like maybe an hour, an hour and a half. And he said, yeah, it's about an hour and a half away. And he's like, I'd love to come right now. I'm out of work, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'll, I'll come meet you. And I'm thinking, oh man, like this is really tempting because I don't want to have to ship it. I wanted to meet him to save the money and also just to ensure he was going to get it. I did not want this to get lost and become a huge hassle as far as making an insurance claim and all that stuff. So I much prefer, now that I know he's closer, I figure, well, even, even if I have to drive to his house, I'll do that. And so I already decided that we're going to meet so that I can safely, physically hand this to him, you know, thank him for the sale and everything, maybe talk a little bit about, you know, the channel and knives and who, who knows what. Um, so I'm like, oh, this is great. And, but I thought, like, I'll do it after the storm. There's a storm coming today. And he dropped it on me. He's like, well, hey, I can get the car right now. I'll see you in a few. And I'm like, oh, man, I was really on the fence because I wanted to get it over with. I wanted to you know, get it to him. He just paid for it. I don't want to have to make him wait. But I'm like, there's a storm coming. So I told him, I said, straight up, there is a huge snowstorm coming. I'm a little concerned about you, uh, you know, driving in the snow because, I mean, it will probably have a couple inches by the time he got to me. Um, you know, but then he has to drive an hour and a half back and I was just worried. I, I, I would feel absolutely horrible if he got into an accident or something because he was coming to buy silver for me. And I certainly did not want to drive all the way to him because of the snow. I didn't want to drive back in it. You know, right now I don't have my truck anymore. If you don't know, if you haven't seen that video, the truck's gone. I sold it. Um, so it's definitely a little sketchy. So I just said, you know what? All right. I said, if you're leaving right now, you'll get here about four when it's going to start snowing and, uh, and that'll be it, right? So he said, all right, cool. I'm in the, I'm in the truck. He, he you know, came in a nice uh, GMC truck, and, and he's like, all right, I'm gone. I'll see you in an hour and a half. Okay, cool. So I'm uh, you know, getting everything ready, and uh, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. I look out, outside, and it's already starting to flurry a little bit and starting to snow around again, 2.30. And I'm thinking, all right, well, you know, just be a little dusting. By the time uh, you know, he sent me a message and said, like, all right, I'm, I'm getting close, I go outside, I clean off my car and stuff, and it's snowing. It's coming down, you know, kind of hard, and I'm, I'm like, really, really nervous. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's too late now. I can't, you know, I can't tell him to turn around and go home. Um, so, uh, I ended up uh, meeting him, you know, at a local place, and uh, by the time he got there, we had maybe, like, an inch or so. It wasn't too bad at all. Uh, it worked out. He was very nice. We got to talk, you know, a few minutes there. Um, you know, show me his, um, his EDC, which was a, a nice, uh, Benchmade Griptilian, a tall guy, by the way. I mean, if I had to guess, maybe 6'4", six, 6'5", six, at least, maybe even taller. I don't know. I got out of the car and, and he got out of his truck and, and he, he was towering over me. Um, <laughs> but super, super nice. I actually feel bad because I was, again, because of the snow, I was nervous. I kind of wanted to get back. I didn't even, I realize now, I didn't even show my EDC. I, you know, I had my knives on me. Obviously, I saw my neck knife and stuff. I have a gun on me, all kinds of things. But uh, I feel rude that, you know, we didn't have a lot of time together. But he did get the silver. He was very happy about that. Um, and it was nice to be able to uh, have a brief conversation with him. And I felt really good, too, because the very next day, I mean, I sold it to him. And spot price was twenty, just over $25. So it was like 25 at maybe 15 or 20 something like that. And the very next day, it went up to 26 and change, all right? So, you know, even if you wanted to sell it the next day, it could have made 150 bucks. So that made me feel really good. Some people might think like, oh man, you should have held out. Well, you don't really know what's gonna happen in the market. And although it doesn't really matter and it has nothing to do with me and it's not my fault if it does, but like if I sold someone a bunch of silver like that and then it dropped immediately, I would feel bad. And you shouldn't have to, it's just business, but I would feel bad, you know? So I'm actually kind of happy that it went up. And now it's going back down a little bit and stabilized and stuff. But the ball is in his court. He could do whatever he wants with his, uh, his nice investment. So, uh, yeah, I, I sold it for $2,500. I'm glad I was able to, to meet him in person. Uh, and it was very cool that it was a viewer. He's been watching it for many, many years now. And I did exactly what I said I was going to do. Uh, I, you know, once I transferred the money and everything, I, uh, I took $1,000 of that money and I put it towards my taxes. That was the whole goal, the whole reason behind actually selling this. 
And I took the 1500 and uh, I ended up putting it into the uh, stock market. A couple other stocks that I, uh, I feel are extremely steady, always rising. Um, it's the, the long-term you know, kind of stock investment. This is not something to flip next week. This is something to keep in there for years and watch that money grow, hopefully. Um, so uh, I was on the fence. I really, like I was close to ordering some gold because that's what I originally wanted to do. But I just could not bring myself to buying any kind of gold right now because the prices are high. You know, it may go up again, but again, my investments are, are really for the long term. I'm not looking to flip anything in a couple weeks or a couple months or even a year or two. Um, so if I bought gold, I really want to buy gold like, you know, around a thousand dollars an ounce. Maybe, maybe 1300 is like on the high end, but I just don't feel comfortable buying any kind of gold at, you know, eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars $1,900. Even if it goes up to $2,500. It doesn't really matter to me because I'm not looking to sell it that quickly. Uh, I do, you know, very much want a nice uh, one ounce gold piece eventually. It's like a bucket list item for me. Um, but again, I'm just going to wait. I don't care if it takes 15, 20 years. I'm going to wait until it gets down to about $1,000. Then I'll be comfortable buying it. But anyway, went into the stock market and, uh, and that is it. Um, very happy with uh, how everything went. It was quick. Boom, boom, boom. The whole thing happened in two days, you know. Uh, listed it, sold it, met the guy, gave him the silver, transferred the money, you know, paid taxes, <laughs> and, uh, you know, invested in the, uh, the stock market. But anyway, the, the biggest point besides telling you what happened with the silver now that it's gone, um, and that my tissue boxes are all empty, well, there, there's tissues in there, so if you're ever over my house, you know, you want tissue, that's cool, but you don't have to be extra sneaky and take a peek in there, because it's not going to find anything. <laughs> but, uh, I love the feedback that I got. I got a, a bunch of personal messages about other people who hide their their money and stuff and I pretty creative stuff I have to say so that, that was that was cool cool to uh, to share and hear everyone else's uh, eccentricities if you will so anyway the the reason I was wanting to making this video is because I was curious to see you know what at max and J and bullion being pretty much the two biggest uh, you know dealers out there precious metals what they would offer at max the biggest the most stable but again they came in short a uh, little disappointed on on their offer, uh, but it is all business. Now, realistically, I could have still made, you know, a bunch of money. I bought it for $15 an ounce. So even if I end up selling it for $22 an ounce, that would have been a very hefty profit. But, you know, I wanted to get Spock, only because I know that it's it's easy. It's, I shouldn't say super easy, but it is fairly easy to get spot price on, on any precious metal at any given time, okay? There's always people interested, always people buying. Um, so you shouldn't really sell yourself short. As far as getting premiums and, and overspot, yeah, that's going to take some work. You could certainly do so. I mean, it was worth $2,500. If I waited out and really just sold it to the right person, I probably could have got maybe $100 over spot, $200 over spot, you know, if I was lucky. Um, but I was very happy with that. I hit my original goal of selling it at $25 an ounce, and I made $1,000 profit. Uh, and like I said, unfortunately, I didn't go out and buy a thousand dollar toy or a really cool knife or anything. I, you know, I just took care of business, paid some taxes because I owed some taxes. Um, but I feel good about the whole whole situation. I, I am bummed. I don't have my hundred ounce bar anymore. That was always a cool thing to have the last four years. It just felt nice to have a big old hefty hunk of silver like that. But I still have plenty of other silver. It's just, um, you know, smaller pieces. Collectively, I have to say I probably have, because I know you guys are curious, how much silver you got left? Well... I can tell you because I don't even have it at my house, um, but I have probably, if I want to, I know it's over 100 ounces, but it's definitely not over 200. Um, in fact, I don't even think it's over 150, so it's probably more like 120 ounces, maybe, tops. Um, so that's what I have still invested in, uh, in silver. And uh, at this point, because I sold 100, silver is still a little bit high. I like to purchase around 15 to 18 is ideal to me, maybe even 15 to 20. At this point, I pretty much just trade for silver. You know, I'm, I'm always open to it. You know, if someone wants a knife and I happen to have a, a knife they want and they want to give me some silver, that's a great way for me personally to obtain it. Um, but as far as buying, I'm still going to hold off. I, I think the market's high. There's just crazy stuff going on. It, it's not a great time to be buying it. However, for all the people who listened to me over the years and you did buy it at $12 an ounce, $13 an ounce, $14 an ounce, $15 an ounce, even $20 an ounce, uh, it's time to sell. Uh, you don't have to sell all of it. In fact, it's a good rule of thumb to only sell half of what you have. Because if you dump all of it, then you don't have any more silver. And then if you want more, you have to buy it at higher prices or you have to wait. Who knows? Maybe even a couple of years to buy more. 
Um, but a good, a good rule of thumb is when it's high like that, I mean, that's why you have it originally. It's an investment. So if you are sitting on some and you want to sell it, I mean, now's a good time. If you got it for under 20 bucks an ounce, you can make a couple bucks. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's it. That is my, uh, my story on uh, what happened with my silver, as well as what happened with these offers. Uh, Jay and Bullion would be uh, my future go-to as far as selling it back to a big company like that. But I still think you can get top dollar, um, you know, selling it personally. So if you hit the right times and you get lucky and the right people see it, eBay's the easiest because you don't have to know anyone. Um, but yeah, you can definitely uh, do pretty good. But anyway, with any kind of investing, timing is always the biggest factor there. You have to kind of know what you're doing and, and get in and, on a good time. And uh, that's how you make out. So that's all. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.